Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Today, we're going to be having a double reaction and analysis, taking a look at the song Mademoiselle Hyde, as first performed by Lara Fabian and then by Dimash Kudaibergen. Now, the reason I wanted to do a double for this video is that Lara has been a huge role model for Dimash. So I wanted to get my first taste of the song with Lara and then see how that might have influenced Dimash's performance. In addition, these two are also tied together by the composer Igor Kutoy, who wrote the song with Lara and has written many other songs now for Dimash. So I think this is gonna be really fun to dig into and analyze. Let's get to it. Lara Fabian. This is a fun song so far. There's an element of danger in it, along with, uh, it feels like, sort of like Arabian influence in the music. It felt like it could have been an Aladdin. It definitely feels like something that could have been from a musical too, because uh, also Jekyll and Hyde is an awesome musical. If you don't know that, you should check it out. Um, and this is, I like her performance and her facial uh, expressions that go along with it. I also found a moment in there that was really cool when she actually used her vibrato to help accent or run down. It was really awesome execution. And it's fun to see Igor playing the piano as well. Okay, let's keep going. We need to catch that transition again. how this is such an elegant piece but she's saying don't touch me I'm Mademoiselle Hyde which has a certain elegant factor to it but then uh, it's it's commanding in a lot of ways but entrancing and draws you and it's got this juxtaposition which really fits with the idea of Jekyll and Hyde I love the way her voice really draws me in as well okay can I continue I swear I always I, I think she's I think she's playing two personalities in this. Um, I it seems like it's starting to develop more clearly to me right now. But she has this like more dangerous uh, kind of like more of a sorceress approach to it seems like maybe the bad side, um, and that was more in her chest voice as well. So it was deeper and also more sensual at the same time. Love the full orchestra and choir behind her. It definitely makes it feel like a big 
like a really big musical theater piece. I'm enjoying it a ton. Uh, let's go back uh, and it uh, catches transition. I'm ready to There's, she's been playing with her hair a couple of times. I wonder if this is like a, a character tick, essentially, she's developed for the bad side. I am so impressed by, I love her tone quality and her belt. It feels like it really is a believable character that is dangerous right now and a little bit um, on edge. It's fun. Okay, back a little bit. Is maybe the innocent good side. I know she's also playing some things in between here. It's really fascinating. I feel like she's got a much deeper subtext to this, which is one of the things that I find fascinating in vocal performances. When a performer, you can tell that they really feel something and have a personal attachment to it, but you don't necessarily know all of the details of their history or what they're thinking about. When you see a person performing with really clear subtext or message, it always intrigues people. It always intrigues an audience because you want to understand and you're looking to really get it. Um, but it's nice because people can also uh, superimpose their own feelings on it and relate to it in a different way. So it's better for it to not be totally 100% uh, transparent. This is this is fascinating the way that she's flipping in different characters right now. I'm really loving it. Let's go back a little bit. So innocence here or fragility. That was a killer long belt at the end. Let's go back and catch that once more. Ooh, I like the way she bit the word off too at the end. Ah, nice, 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 nice. Okay, so quick impression so far. I, I think this song is super fun. I love that they've made it together. And uh, I really am curious what levels uh, where Dimash is going to take it because I feel like he's going to expand on it some really interesting way. Um, but this performance was so fun to see more of the character aspects of Lara's voice. It's the first time I've seen something where I felt like she was uh, tapping into her inner actress more than than just an inner life message. So it was really, really fun. It looked like she was having fun herself on stage as well. Now time for some Dimash. Okay, before we start singing, just really interesting knowing this is three years later in the same venue, 
Uh, it's going to be, I think, a little bit different arrangement. But the color choices already give you some indication of where this might go. Laura's background had a lot more blue and it felt a little more black and white, a little more classical in that nature, a little more cold. And then these colors are very red in nature. So you feel like it's just going to be more fiery in some way. I like this in his uh, upper register. It feels, uh, it feels more innocent in a lot of ways, uh, and I'm I'm looking for that juxtaposition of characters now uh, that I didn't know to look for at first when I was listening to Lara. Um, it's a really pretty tone though up there. It feels uh, similar to Lara's higher tone. It has a certain fragility in it that feels like maybe this person is going to be uh, ripped apart by these two voices. Uh, I think the orchestra in this one is smaller as well. So just to note, it looks like they still have a full choir, but it looked like the orchestra um, just had fewer members. such a, a beautiful execution of that top line and he's singing high too I think this I think this is the same key as Laura's was whoa um and he's singing it right where she was that's really really cool um I love the airiness that he brought into his tone and I also love having uh the subtitles in this version so I can catch any words I missed the first time <sighs> interesting how they add a couple of effects in uh they might have added them live but they put them on like a mixing board afterwards there's like a short delay that they pulled in after beast we'll go back and catch that so you can hear it again uh i like that because it made it sound like there was another voice singing with them for a bit uh i'm also i feel like i've seen a few familiar faces in this choir which makes me wonder how many of the orchestra and choir members on stage were here before Obviously, we have Igor playing the piano once again, so that's pretty awesome. It'd be so cool to do the same piece, but in a different style two different times. Wow, I just think that'd be a really awesome experience. Uh, let's go back and catch that moment where there was a, a short delay put on Dimash's voice. Okay. Right there. So B, and then you were E, 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 kind of hanging out in the background. That's cool. And actually, even in my headphones, it pans. So it goes one side and then the other side with the two delays. Cool. I like that effect a lot.
technical prowess is crazy. I love how he did this the first time in falsetto and now he's just like flat out belting it full voice. He's good to go. Uh, it's really, really quite impressive. Ah, uh, let's catch back a little bit. There was one moment in particular where I was like, ooh, this man, if he sang opera, I would, I would go to that performance, especially, let's see, surrender was the word. He just brings in a little more round resonance. When he's belting and pop, it tends to be more forward and lasered. Um, but surrender, you got all of this like dome and extra gooey warm resonance that was really nice. They did the same delay on Hyde at that cutoff. So that same like uh, panned delay in two different areas. That was neat. Uh, I liked uh, I liked how long he held that note and then gave a little extra oof at the end. That was cool. Um, and also it's it's nice to see that he's changed it from Mademoiselle Hyde to Mr. Hyde. Uh, it almost sounds like it's an answer to Lara's song. <laughs> Okay, the belted note at the end. Wait, what note is that? Oh, I'm into my, my keyboard on. I don't have it on right now. It was off, sorry. Um, we'll check that note in just a bit. That was amazing. It was, you could tell that it wasn't forced. It had a lot of laser and focus in the sound, but at the same time, it had freedom in the larynx. I didn't feel like he was using his tongue to depress the larynx to make the sound come out or something like that. Uh, I That was a really, really fantastic belted note at the end. Um, I didn't catch the first time. I think Laura must have said, now you're Mr. Hyde. And he said, now you're Mademoiselle Hyde. Uh, so that's sort of an interesting flip at the end of the piece. I don't think that Laura's had this uh, catwalk. Is that, do we want to call that a catwalk? It's this pathway this, that extends a thrust stage, I think might actually be the technical term for it. They had that at Opera Theater of St. Louis too. So uh, I don't think that they had that. Uh, I like the way that Dimash used it at the end. Uh, and obviously I like the way that he prepped to make it a really, really dramatic ending as well. And you can really tell that he's taken the juxtaposition of voices that Lara was already digging into some and uh, given given that uh, a male take, which is very, very cool. Let's go back um, and catch this last note again and I'm gonna check what the pitch is. <laughs> So that is an F sharp five. Very high note to be using the full voice on, which he is doing right here. That's very impressive to me. Uh, I wanna go back one more time. Uh, this moment when he starts to come out on stage, it feels to me like something in Dimash just frees up. I think 
I think Dimash really feels best as a performer when he is moving around on stage and like able to go out and like reach out to the audience in some ways. Uh, I think Lara feels best when she's able to be on stage and, and in in her own place and be able to emote more from one place. And she moves around some, but it's like she draws the audience more into her and what's happening in her mind. Dimash does that some, but he seems like his biggest forte is actually going out and being there with the audience. Even his uh, his performance of No, he when he sat down, he was sitting down right in front of them. He wasn't sitting down in the back of the stage. He's right there with them. So check this out. Some sort of freedom happens here. <laughs> Wow, that was that was that's an awesome ending, an awesome pose there. And I definitely am seeing that pattern. I think that Lara takes more inspiration and, and energy. She's more of an inside out person. And I think Dimash takes it more from the audience. They both do both ways, but it just seems like one of them might prefer one way or the other. Overall take on this song is that it is a really cool composition. Bravo to Lara and Igor for that. I love the way that they've really tapped into that good and evil side, the Jekyll and Hyde, and the way that they've captured that too in where the song sits for vocal registers. Obviously, it's going to sit a little bit differently for male and female, but I loved hearing how Dimash was able to sing it in his registers. He's he's kind of a, an amazing technical singer in addition to having really great emotional connection, I think. And it was fun to hear him translate that into full belts and then moments of tender, fragile falsetto, which I definitely think was influenced by how Lara first sang it. So that progression was really, really cool. And I loved getting to see how both of them expressed the song too, having that comparison of Dimash sort of out in the audience and Lara on stage, um, I would say like giving up her emotions to the audience. Uh, fascinating, um, fascinating to see the whole progression through. So thank you so much for this recommendation and for watching the entire two videos with me. I love your input and I would love to have more. I have a Patreon where you can join me every week for live video chats. And I also am here on YouTube for premieres on Mondays and Fridays at 8 a.m. Pacific time. Now, I don't want you to miss out on one of the coolest things that's coming up here soon. I'm going to be having my 100,000 subscriber party on October 2nd at 9 a.m. We're going to have giveaways. Uh, I'm going to be drinking mimosas. So please come and join us for that live stream event. It's going to be so much fun. And I'll hope to see you somewhere soon. Thanks.